The Podcasting Dead is available on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and SoundCloud. Make sure to subscribe for more podcasts. And while you're at it, drop us a like. If you want to help support the channel and have access to extra content, secret contests, and more, make sure to search for us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash The Podcasting Dead. Time to get spooky. And weird on a Wednesday. I'm Justin. I'm JP. And we're the Podcasting Dead. Uh, if you're new to the channel, before we begin, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Or, you know what, it's a little too early, I guess, to decide if you want to subscribe to us. So maybe watch this all the way through. If you like it, hit subscribe. Either way, just leave us a like. It takes a second. Helps out a ton. We'll talk about a Patreon at the end of this uh, video. But for now, we're doing another. We're not going to wear out our welcome with these. But we figured we'd do another one where we are going to play you a air quotes, ghost video or two, and we're just going to give our thoughts and if it's real, if it's fake, you know, things like that. And I get these from Nuke's Top 5, which is like my favorite channel on YouTube. I followed Nuke for many years now, and I've said before, my favorite thing at work is on my lunch break to go get Taco Bell and watch Nuke's latest video, usually a new video every week. Links to his channel are in the description. Links to this video uh, also in the description. So, uh, without further ado, JP, are you ready? I hope so. I hope you are, too. Uh, Let's play the video. Invisible Friend TikTok user Luan, also known as Joshua Luck from Mexico, had a TikTok account dedicated entirely to his two-year-old son. Luan operates a general store on the first floor of his house that he shares with his wife and children. Then one day, Luan's video content drastically changes as his two-year-old son begins to claim that he sees what he describes as a terrifying invisible child. This alleged invisible child scares Luan's son so much that he often cries in fear. Luan says that he doesn't see anything, but he says he has experienced a few strange incidents with things around the house seeming to move on their own. It's got the kid crying. Then late one night at four in the morning, Luan is awoken by unexplained loud noises coming from downstairs. Taking his stores, getting robbed, he records everything as he runs downstairs. Buenos amigos, bajé. Empezamos a escuchar ruidos y vine a dar una vuelta. Tenía miedo de que estuvieran abriendo la tienda o algo así, pero no. Vean, no hay nada. It almost looks like a cloaked figure, don't it? Yeah, I, I know it's not, but it kind of looks like. ¿Sí vieron? ¿Qué pasó? Pero mejor me voy, le dijo mi esposa, porque esta chingadera se movió sola. Do you ever watch foreign ya me está dando cosita. language on videos, like the subtitles, to try and learn how to say cuss it's words in the language? I never have. For the first time, Luan captures something on camera that he can't explain. A chair moves on its own. Over the next few days, the unexplained activity seems to intensify every single night. Things fall off shelves without explanation. The family starts to hear whispers, and late at night they hear a light tapping sound coming from inside their bedroom closet. One night when the knocking sound from inside the closet becomes terrifyingly loud, Luan once again decides to record to collect proof. Ooh, man, we really believe in ghosts. That gives me chills. ¿Qué es eso? ¿Qué es eso? No inventes. ¿Qué es eso? ¿Qué es eso? Se abrió. Se abrió. Se abrió. Se abrió. Se abrió. Wow. Se abrió. Se abrió. Se abrió. Se abrió. ¿Hay alguien ahí? ¿Te podemos ayudar? ¿Necesitas algo? Dinos. Dinos. Se asomó alguien. Alúzame. 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 Espera. Espérate. Alúzame. Be a tiny little wardrobe for somebody to try to hide in. I'd be worried it's a possum. No sé, no sé. Or a raccoon. But I don't know if they have possums in Mexico. Do they have possums in Mexico? Maybe it'd be an armadillo. I don't think so. This poor wife sounds super distraught. Juan and his wife are lying in bed when the closet door swings open on its own. Then something seems to peek out at them from inside That's the closet. The, look at that. Luan oh, rushes wow. over to look inside, but there's nothing there. 
that his looks wife seems legitimately like terrified. a little child. It looked like they he take cheated. the kids and leave the home for the night. Now of the course, ghosts eventually, come after you Luan and his family like a, have to return. So they decide to do an overnight recording session, hoping to catch some evidence of the strange activity in their home. What they capture is downright chilling. Yeah, this is this is interesting. I couldn't live above my own general store. I would eat and drink everything in there and I would not make a profit. It'd be great if you need more beer, though. Yeah. You run, that's what you do if you see something. Mejor tú graba de este lado y yo me voy y grabo de este otro donde está la cuna. Bueno, a ver, cámbiate. Es que mira, ¿Sí? también acá está oscuro. Did you see it? Luan claims that his phone battery died right at the moment he captured something terrifying on camera. A face with glowing eyes is staring right at them I would have from totally the entrance missed of that. the store. I don't see it. But the bizarre activity didn't end there. On another night, Luan hears something knocking on their door. He turns on all the lights and once again starts recording. Noches, amigos. Me tocaron la puerta. Este carrito estaba en el sillón. Se cayó. Como saben, me duermo a veces en la sala, pues porque me siento nervioso. No hay nadie aquí afuera. También he prendido la luz, pues para sentirme un poquito más seguro. Se escuchan ruidos. Eso se ha escuchado murmullos aquí en el baño. No sé si será de aquí. Como pueden ver, está vacío. Vénganse por acá. Vamos a checar si de acá vienen. No, está todo tranquilo. Vamos a ver si aquí de la tienda. Si entro en la tienda. Parece que aquí no es. Se quieren acá. Vengan, vamos a ver. No, aquí no son. Venganse, vámonos por acá. No sé qué está pasando. Mejor vámonos, venga, venga. Me siento nervioso, vámonos. As he pans his camera, someone or something with Ooh, long dark hair little, seems uh, to quickly move away and out of sight. Okay, it almost looks like there's plastic on it. to what happens on the night of October 18th. See how the face shines? When the goes yeah. to the restroom, something knocks on his bathroom door. That's when things get truly bizarre. So you're like, yo, I'm, I'm pooping. Yeah, that would be the worst. Me está tocando la puerta. Me siento muy nervioso, no sé qué hacer. Me tocaron otra vez. Even ghosts gotta exercise. Did you see it? Something knocks on the door. Objects have fallen on the floor. Exercise equipment is moving on its own. But creepiest of all, as Luan pans his camera around his living room, in one split second, he captures a shadow figure sitting okay. on his couch. The it's easy to miss if you empty, don't know what you're looking only for. Only right. earlier. I, I would have just thought that was a so person. So what do something. you think is happening to Luan and his family? Is their home and store haunted by a dark entity? Or is it all just an elaborate hoax? What do you do in that situation? Let's discuss. Okay, so uh, getting the obvious out the way as far as is it real or is it fake? Um, I'm definitely, I don't like to, you know, it, I, I would hate to say something's a hoax if someone really is going through something like that. Mm -hmm. But reasons why someone might would fake that, I mean, haven't we seen plenty of times where people report paranormal activity or they have paranormal activity and really it's just a marketing ploy to drive more business to their place? Yeah, or maybe he's trying to just, you know, bolster his TikTok following. He might be like us, just con a content creator that wants to monetize what he's doing and get bigger and better. But with that said, getting that out the way, because if, if it is fake, for me, that's it's just, you know, that's that's the reason to get more attention, like you said, to either his TikTok channel or 
to get more attention at his store and just get mm-hmm. more people to come in there and buy stuff, you know, because they'll come in because supposedly the store is haunted. And, you know, I mean, hotels do it all the time. You know, oh, our hotel is super haunted and it drives business because people yeah. want to stay in a haunted hotel. And, you know, it's like I was uh, one video. We're not going to go over. We got another video or two to go over. But one of the, one of the videos on this top 10 list here, um, we're not going to do. The thing that immediately caught my attention was that the hotel on another video, the whole you can rent it. Yeah. And it's supposedly one of the most it's actually called Hill House, but hmm. it's supposedly one of the most haunted places in America. And you just so can conveniently <laughs> right. rent it out. Granted, people claim to have had lots of crazy experiences. So maybe it is haunted, but I'm just saying someone's taken that and made a business out of it, which to me takes a little bit away from the credibility. Yeah. I mean, ghost hunters, you know, especially these paranormal investigating channels on YouTube can go there, fake an experience because it's supposed to be the most haunted house in America. And now, boom, their video views are through the roof. So right. even though they go and there's absolutely nothing there, you know, it, people are more inclined to believe us. But anyways, back to our friend here in Mexico. What do you think? I mean, do you think this is fake? I mean, I, I think most of the things we saw, you know, could have been faked. Some of the, uh, like the specters that we saw, like the so some of the visages, you know, the, I, I don't know exactly what would go into faking those. And I mean, of course, some of, some, not all, but like, they, they, they would look like a girl ducking around behind the corner real quick. Yeah. Who's to say that wasn't a shoplifter who broke in and, and was just dodging him? You know what I'm saying? That that could be true. Just trying to throw some rationality into it, you know, completely could totally be ghosts or trans-dimensional beings. But I'm saying, if you want to look at it logically, I mean, who's to say that's not someone who broke in? But and you know what about the face in the closet though? that's the that, that one, one's freaky that one that one is it, it, unless there's some kind of like I, unless there's like a cut out in the wall behind that closet or maybe the closet was i mean the wardrobe was not against the wall mm-hmm. maybe he got like his kid to get in there and climb back out but i feel like that would be a little troublesome to fake yeah that's what i was saying there was a couple times where you see like a, a face like that with the with the glowing eyes kind of mm-hmm. I, I don't know man that's got me kind of wondering and you know human eyes don't typically glow when you shine light on them nah, they we don't, don't have that feature in our in our eyes like wild animals do that allow us to see mm-hmm. better at night no this one uh this one is definitely a suspect Oh, so you're not immediately ruling this one as, as no, a hoax? this one I won't rule out immediately. If, if this was beyond belief, fact, or fiction, I think there may be something to this one. Wow. And I, if you're new to the channel, the reason why that's surprising is I think that, you know, we've only done like three or four of these, but I think almost every one you've thought was fake. The Grudge Girl one we were a little iffy on, but mm-hmm. most of them you've thought were fake. But this one you think there might be. And so is, is the, the, the face in the closet will really put the nail in the coffin for you? That one definitely stuck out to me, and, and it might have something to do with the, uh, you know, just the guy's voice. I don't know. Hmm. So you think it's it, this one could be authentic? It might be. I mean, of course, you know, trying to rationally explain, like I said, there could be a cutout in the back of the wardrobe know, that the he got his kid to go in and peek, and then as soon you know, and he got out, and then a woman ducking around the corner is just as simple as getting one of your friends to, to be yeah. there. Now the woman uh, that definitely could have been a real person, but that, that thing in the closet just didn't look human to me. I don't know. What man. do you th- What are you thinking? You said don't look human. You think it's some kind of demon or trans dimensional being. Uh, I say trans dimensional again, if you're new to the channel, because JP has said in past podcasts, it's not so much that he, he doesn't know. He's kind of like myself. He's got to experience it to believe it. But when it comes to things like extraterrestrials and ghosts, JP has stated multiple times he's more inclined to believe in transdimensional beings more so than like dead soul, you know, souls of dead people or, or extraterrestrials. I think a lot of times they are, you know, things coming from somewhere else, almost like explorers or in, in some cases predators that are, are jumping, jumping from, you know, just reality to reality. Predators? Predators, like, yeah. Well, I've heard of some, you know, shadow people, some theories being that they are energy vampires in yes. a way. They feed on the negative energy. So they would haunt you or do things to scare you because, you know, being that they are beings not made, you know, with the biological makeup not being like ours. I mean, it sounds far fetched that something could feed on energy, but perhaps it could. Well, what you've really got to look out for is when you you encounter the ones that feed off of suffering. The ones that, and those are usually the ones where you you encounter like demonic possession or a stigmata. 
you know, the, the ones that feed on pain and suffering, dude, those are the nasty bits. Very interesting. I am very shocked right now that JP is saying that uh, th- there might be something to this. Might, this That's, one, maybe. Well, let's get to the next video and see what you think. Watcher. The following footage was sent to me by Nuke's top five viewer who wishes to remain completely anonymous to protect his job. So for the purposes of protecting his anonymity, I'll simply refer Anonymity. to him as John I in the video. Can you say it? I so, can't. Anonymity. John says Anonymity. that he works overnight security at a well-known Anonymity. logistics company. He says that one night, a fellow worker at his job became overheated and collapsed, falling over a two-story high railing. Oh Unfortunately, he did not survive the fall. Poor guy. Much later that same night at around 3 a.m. in the morning, John says that he was doing what he calls, quote, camera patrol. Basically just checking the footage from all of the building's inner and outer surveillance cameras. That's when he spotted this. Hey, what's up, Nuke? Um, can't really be having my phone in here, so I have the brightness all the way down. But I'm security at this place, and I am in the camera room where I'm having access to a lot of the cameras. And I just reported to my supervisor that I noticed someone just kind of like standing um, in the grass across from uh, from the building. And I wanted to show it to you. Um, so yeah, I can't have my phone on for on the screen for too Did long. Did you think of like Marvel I'm gonna try Watchers to show you when you saw the title? Yeah. That I have. Um, so yeah, here's the first viewpoint. So, it's that right there. And this is a live feed. This there's is no image. tree, there's nothing there. Uh, there, there it is again. Like, it's just standing there. And I let my supervisor know, but like... Our security procedure says that as long as no, as long as he's not going towards the door, then like we don't have to have any worry. But like, it's just been standing right there. It's to the right of my cursor, just to the right there. I don't care. I'll even try to zoom in. Like. We got a bad viewpoint, but like, there it is to the left. And like, this is a 24 camera, 24 frame, uh, 1080p camera. But like, it's so like, dark and distinguished. So yeah. John says that the misty shape of a person was just standing in a nearby field. John says that he watched for hours. He says the figure moved slightly from time to time, but never came any closer. Perhaps even more bizarre, he says that he almost felt like the misty figure was actually staring back at him through the cameras. You notice it almost looked too like that figure was like shifting. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. you got to remember, yeah. I know he was zoomed in and the more you zoom in, the more pixelated and the more distorted it's going to get. But it almost looked like it was changing form, like a shape shifter or a skin crawler or something. Yeah, it was definitely like a. That's what I'm wondering if it was a camera distortion, just an an, an anomaly, you know, digitally, or if, if there was something there, you know. Especially know. considering he says he, you know, which we got to take this kid at his word, but he yeah. says that it, it stood there for hours. Right. And I mean, the easy explanation is it's just some weirdo just out there staring, or it could be someone who's, uh, you know, mentally handicapped that's just sure. kind of out of it, or. But but still, I mean, what do you th- what are your thoughts on that one? Well, it seems like if it was a person, he would have gotten like a clearer image of of the person, you know? Right. And that was that that was so uh, like specterish. Well, another uh, a transdimensional being could put out something, you know, uh, some kind of energy that could mm-hmm. disrupt cameras, perhaps. Yeah, that's true. And I mean, it, it may only be able to you know get a certain spectrum of it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I found that one to be interesting. Uh, what, what What do you think about that one? I I think it could be chalked up to a uh, just some kind of distortion with the camera or something, but uh, it does make you wonder. 
It was very distinguished. It was definitely it was. very human shaped. And if it was there for like hours, I mean, it's it's hard to imagine that you know a distortion would would happen like that. And it's hard to imagine, even if it was just a person, someone standing in one spot like that for right. hours. Exactly. I mean. I don't know if it's just me, but try and stand in one spot doing nothing for like 10 minutes and mm-hmm. you'll find it's, uh, but it doesn't look like the person's moving much other than it looks kind of like their body is warping a little bit. You yeah, know what I mean? That was, that's what was so freaky. And time for the last one. This is a very quick one, but I found it to be pretty interesting. And JP, I would like to get your opinion on it. All right. A connection from beyond. Sarah Lee Sager is jokingly recording the live feed from their new security camera as her boyfriend Stacy is outside their apartment in the dark, struggling to get the new camera installed. But even as Stacy is outside installing the brand new security camera, it captures someone who just shouldn't be there. I'm video recording him. Wait, I just seen a fucking something. God, really? Hi, Stacy. You look scary. Did you see it? A woman appears behind Stacy for a brief second and then disappears. And Sarah captures it all on her phone camera inside. Stacy says he saw no one outside while installing the cam. But what makes this footage even more bizarre is that the figure has an eerie resemblance to a woman named Teresa Tingi who lost her life in 2008 under absolutely tragic circumstances very near this apartment. After discovering the shocking video, Sarah learns that the deceased woman was actually friends with her sister. Sarah feels that this possible connection to the spirit might have been the reason that she was able to capture the entity on video. So did Sarah capture the ghost of Teresa Tingi, still wandering the streets where she lost her life? You decide. That's pretty haunting. Yeah, so, all right, what are your thoughts on that? Because, first off, I was really trying to, and I might have to slow it down and re-examine it, but I was looking to see if it looked like she turns to walk away at any point. Mm -hmm. In which case, it could just be a nosy person down, you know, walking down the street like, just kind of, maybe they were going to try and steal your wallet. You, know, you uh-huh. don't know, but I don't. And then the eyes were really glowy too. Yeah. Now, if she had, you know, if she had video of her friend, how easy would it have been to superimpose that? Which this uh, this was a live feed, right? No. Well, this one wasn't live. No, this was. Uh, she was just recording it on her phone. On her phone. So I right. mean, I guess you could do. But I'm gonna tell you, man, and I'm not an expert. So anybody who, I mean, and I've done video editing all my life, but. You know, I've never done anything insane. Like, mm-hmm. I've never done, you know, a lot of, like, uh, CGI or anything. It's always sure. been some of your basic video editing uh, techniques. But that, to me, didn't look CGI'd or imposed at all. I mean, it could be done. I mean, I know if you you know what you're doing. But, I mean, think about this. Even in Hollywood cinema blockbusters, you can usually pick out the CGI pretty yeah. damn good. And I know that, you know... Uh, another argument could be, like you said, she's not CGI. She's just kind of imposed in there. But then you got to look for things like, you know, if she was superimposed in there, you'd be able to, you know, you've got to pay a lot of attention to detail. So the camera's moving, right? Uh huh. You and it looked like she was. Is her mo- is the movement of you know is is her movement or she wasn't you know moving? You, it's hard to say what's in my head, but basically, if the camera was shaky and bouncing like this, and someone dropped a video, another video of a girl in there, uh-huh. then I feel like they wouldn't match up. You know what I'm saying? Okay, You'd almost look like this side was moving this yeah, way, yeah. and this might have been sitting still, or it might have been moving the wrong way. But it looked like the whole thing was kind of moving in unison, unless maybe you filmed it, you superimposed her, and then you took and did a third shoot of it where you were moving you know what i'm saying but, i understand but i i don't to me i i don't i don't think it looks if, even if it's a 100 percent fake video it seems like it would have been more practical effects than video editing i think so to too. me uh and i mean it would have been super easy that's why i was really trying to look i need to go back and slow the video so maybe we'll report back on that at some point but i wanted to see if it looks like she turns to walk away because even though it was very fast it looked like there was a corner of a house or something right there I mean, it'd be very easy to pop right there, turn around and walk away and look like you're there and you're gone in the flash. But there is just something eerie in my gut about this video. One thing I will, I don't, in my opinion, I don't think it was a a person. I think it was either some kind of visual effect or an anomaly that, you know, for some reason looked like her dead friend. 
Very, very interesting. I mean, uh, we talked to with ghosts about residual energy, which I think when you and I talk about what we would believe in terms of ghosts, that's something we would be more inclined to believe more so than just lost spirits, like well, you know, an impression left on the. But I don't, you know, I don't know though. But I mean, residual energy would assume she had walked there before. You know, she had been there in yeah. that exact spot in the past. Well, I know dark travelers that you know they'll try to assume a familiar form, be it you know your friend or loved one, whatever. So, well, we had uh, Andrew, a good friend of ours, on the podcast last year, and we were doing a little mini series of like personal ghost experiences, and mm-hmm. you know, he was very adamant that there are no such thing as ghosts. That when you die, you go to one of two places. That right. Anything assuming a familiar face to you is a demon in disguise. A lot of people think that way. And I, you know, I'm going to be honest. I don't think I had ever heard of that until he told us that. But then I've now had people come out and say, yeah, that's what I believe that, you know, you don't, your grandma's gone. She's, Mm -hmm. she's in one of two places and that's it. Right. Or, or, you know, even if you're not super Christian, it's just, she's moved on to the afterlife. Mm -hmm. But if you're seeing her, that ain't her. Yeah, that is a, a lot of that. Yeah, a lot of people have that school of thought. So, I, th- I think it was either some kind of parasitic entity, perhaps, like I said, a dark traveler, or just you know they they they're really good at uh at you know editing and and whatnot. And like I said, don't forget, there's always the chance that she just happened to walk up on him, mm-hmm. and then you know, I mean, let's imagine she's like a, a, a drug addict or you know someone who was going to rob him. I mean, I'm not saying she had any ill intent at all, but I'm mm-hmm. just saying, let's just imagine for whatever reason, she's got bad intentions and she, you know, hypothetically, and she walks up behind him, maybe to grab his wallet, maybe to whatever. And she realizes, Oh crap, he's installing a security camera. Right. And then quickly ducks out around the house. You know, if, if I have to go back and look, but it looked like there was a corner of a house there. So she could have just rolled up and like, Oh crap camera. And then just ducked around the corner. But because of the movement of the camera, it looked like she was there and then she was gone. In my mind, I, just, I don't think it was a, a human. You don't think it was a regular person? I don't think it was a human, no. Very interesting. Well, as always, to the listener, let us know in the comments what you think about each one of these. Which ones do you think are fake? Which ones do you think are real? Why do you think they're fake? Why do you think they're real? And uh, we, we'd love to hear your opinions. And if you enjoyed this, we actually are a podcasting channel. Uh, you know, we don't do that many videos, though we do want to start doing video podcasts. But uh, this was something we did for fun a while back. People seem to enjoy it. So now we're just throwing them out every other, you know, every couple of weird Wednesdays. Exactly. And Weird Wednesday is a time where we talk about conspiracies or supernatural beings or whatever. It's where we get weird on Wednesday. Exactly. Um, but so if you enjoyed this, make sure to hit that subscribe button and check out our library. We've got to, at this point in our YouTube time, or our podcasting time, because we're on more than YouTube, but we have probably got hundreds and hundreds of things to it's check out. a lot out. of content, yeah. We also talk about The Walking Dead. Uh, we, we talk about a little bit of everything. And if you like podcasts in general, consider checking out our Patreon, patreon.com slash the podcasting dead, where you can get up to eight extra podcasts a month for as little as a dollar for right now. So, yep. $1. you know, that, that might change at some point. And don't get me wrong, and you'll be grandfathered in if you've already come in under one dollar and you get the extra podcast but for the time being newcomers can still get that by signing on for as little as a dollar but if you want to do five ten twenty one million dollars we're cool with that yeah that's that's fine with me but check it out and uh, we'll see you on patreon tomorrow for another patreon exclusive podcast and then we'll be back here on friday for some walking dead what ifs it's gonna be a good time it always is i'm justin i'm jp and we're the podcasting dead stay weird